All right. Well, today we're going to be taking a look at the Fury B X140. That's the bind and fly from gearbest.com. Little three inch bind and fly quadcopter that you can get with the Fly Sky receiver, the FR Sky receiver, or the FM800 receiver. And you can also get it without a receiver. And also, we're going to be comparing it to the Fury B X140 frame that we put together with our own parts. Kind of did things different the way we would have it. So I guess the first thing we'll talk about is what all comes on the Fury B. Um, it's a basic F3 omnibus flight controller with a 4-in-1 20 amp ESC. It's got a 40 channel 2500 milliwatt or 100 milliwatt switchable uh, VTX, which I found to be quite a pain in the neck to change channels and uh, video signal strength, but we'll talk about that in a couple minutes. Um, the motors are DYS 1306 3100 KV brushless motors and it came in the box with two complete sets of 3034 blade it's got what looks to be a run cam micro swift but it is actually a clone of the micro swift works pretty well but it's definitely not the same um, and I think if I was to do anything to this out of the box, it would be putting an actual run cam camera on here. I think other than that, everything was pretty satisfactory out of the box. Um, another thing, actually, honestly, is it comes with, uh, I've, I've got the FR Sky model here, and uh, we would definitely change that XM receiver for an XM Plus, which is what we put on this one. Uh, the XM Plus is a full range receiver uh, and it just you really do get a lot more range out of that that XM Plus it also comes with a linear polarized uh, video transmitter antenna and the linear works it's it's decent on 100 milliwatts uh, but I'd, I'd really prefer to have the uh, SMA or RPSMA screw on so I can do an antenna of choice on there. Um, you know, really, one of the best things for flying these is being able to see what you're doing. And uh, having a circular polarized antenna makes a huge difference. Even if it adds a good bit of weight to one of these micro drones, I prefer to be able to see what I'm flying. And it really doesn't add that much weight to it. Speaking of weight, out of the box, the Fury B X140 uh, weighs about 125 grams, which is way below the FAA registration weight, which is awesome. Um, so you could pretty much do what you want with this as far as flying it, and you don't have to worry about regulations uh, so much. You still want to have common sense when you fly it. Kind of cool feature is it comes with LEDs on the back. It's got four LEDs, and they're programmed to kind of move around and blink if you turn and stuff. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, and a buzzer, a nice loud buzzer, so if you lose it, you can set it up so you can hear it. It is, it's loud. It's You can hear it from a, probably 40 yards away, 50 yards away. Anything when you uh, first flew it that stood out to you, Doze? Maybe the way it felt compared to a 5-inch? It felt the same as a real quad, kind of. Right, like as a big quad? Yeah. Why don't you grab one of those five inch? This one goes as long as it goes as far as the new big room. Right. See, and that is that's one of the things I wanted to point out, and you know, I know I 
I mentioned it once is the uh, the two antennas on here basically this the receiver that we installed on this is a XM plus full range micro receiver um, and with that on here we're able to fly this little three inch quad as far as we can our five inch builds um, same thing you know having that the circular polarized VTX um, antenna gives us that extra range as well. Do you, do you think this antenna is uh, as good as this one? The AOP? They do really well. Um, <laughs> I get a little off subject with that, but yeah. Uh, that's basically the new Lumineer AXI 5.8, and that's in the right hand circular polarized um, SMA. And that is one of our favorite antennas now. It, it works really good um, even with the battery pack on top and it behind the battery pack it still seems to put out a really nice picture and on the fat sharks it takes up a whole lot less room but uh, to answer that question the um, yeah it, I mean it, it I wouldn't say it's quite as nice as the Lumineer but it works really well but yeah the size difference is just crazy I mean seeing the pictures online don't show you how tiny these really are really and truly like what Doe said uh, my first impressions when I flew this uh, we f we flew it on 4s with a little 550 milliamp hour cheap little ADC battery pack that we got from Banggood and uh, the 550 was definitely too small as far as milliamp hours uh, it tended to run out less than three minutes um, but it did carry it really well and it was extremely fast and and uh, I don't know how to put it uh, snappy I guess with the lighter battery um, and then we kind of went through and played with the 750 uh, milliamp hour batteries which tend to be a little bit better they're heavier but um, they definitely last longer you get like four or five minute flights out of these and uh, what we ended up going with are the uh, ready-made RC 850s um, these just really excel uh, with these quads with both of them uh, both setups you know you're getting five minute run time six minute run times and if you push really really hard you might cut it down to like four minutes but you still get a lot of run out of those and they're only uh, 60c but uh, ready-made's got a good price on those I think they're about 15 bucks a piece these quads do they they fly very similar to the big quads I don't know I almost feel like they're more floaty feeling is that is that right like yeah. I don't know I feel like the hang time is slower almost like a like when I get upside down you know do an S turn I feel like that hang time is just lasts longer because of how small it is I don't know it could just be in my head both of these are 1306s those are the 1306 uh, 4000 kV Emacs red bottoms on this one that we put together um, as you can see it's got the actual run cam micro swift with the 2.1 lens on there but uh, those little 4000 kV motors really do some work we started with uh, some racer star 1806s really and truly they just weighed it down so you like lighter better than heavier yeah I definitely like the 1306 motors better than the 1806 with the higher KV too so these ones are the the factory ones on the Fury B were 3100 KV and the Emacs are uh, right at 4000 KV so they're a little bit faster and they really do I mean you can feel a difference uh, when you get out there and really stretch it out it's really nice it's set up with some four millimeter uh, chamfered arms so they're they're cleaned up really well doesn't feel like you need to take a file to them or anything like that. The uh, F3 flight controller comes set up with Omnibus 3.1.7 um, and the LEDs are set up. It's already s set up and I want to say tuned as well but it flew really well uh, with the factory set up. All you got to do is just bind the receiver and you're good to go. Um, you want to go into the of course the beta flight and set up some switches for arm in it and your buzzer um, but it's everything else is ready to go other than your switch settings. 
It supports two to four cell. Um, you could probably even run it on 5S. I don't know if the motors would like that. But uh, it flies really well with four cell. I, I wouldn't even try it, honestly, with anything less. Uh, it feels, I could almost ask for more power with the 4S batteries that are on there. I don't even, run, I don't even fly five cell on the The big cell. quads, right. It's just a lot of power. The uh, 20 amp 4 in 1 ESC is uh, D shot ready. And of course, you can run multi shot 42 and what is it, 125. Uh, but if you could get D shot uh, 600 on there, that'd be great. Um, I know it's D shot ready though, which is cool. That little Run Cam Swift micro uh, clone is a 600 TVL CCD camera, and it does have. A nice picture to it surprisingly it, it really does work well uh, the dynamic range so the light changing from dark to light could be a little bit better but it does it does remotely close to what the actual micro swift does but I still prefer the standard micro swift over that clone yeah for sure <clears throat> it's got a 130 degree field of view with a 2.3 millimeter lens that comes stock on there and again, that's another one of the things is we prefer the 2.1 millimeter lens. It gives you a little bit more uh, that wider view. I think it's about 150 or 160 degrees on that. The 40 channel receiver, or uh, VTX, I'm sorry. And it does have race band, which is awesome. Uh, this way you could get out and actually do some racing with it. I really like that. A lot of these out of the box, ready to run, bind and fly quadcopters don't have the uh, race band and the VTXs and that's I think that's a essential. That's what we need to do, have a micro race. Right. Everybody should have micro races. <clears throat> the board configuration on this is gonna be a twenty by twenty instead of the thirty and a half by thirty and a half. But I will say um, with this frame it's got the twenty by twenty but also um, the thirty and a half by thirty and a half and you can just take the nuts off and actually set it up with full size uh, 30 and a half by 30 and a half boards, which is what we did on this. Um, basically, it's got an HGLRC all in one, the F3 V4, which is a VTX F3 OSD and PDB built into one, and then it's the uh, Racer Star 4 in 1 20 amp ESC. So it can take, uh, the Fury B can take. A 20 by 20 mil board layout or the 30 and a half by 30 and a half which is another cool feature uh, if you got some full-size electronics that you like uh, they'll definitely fit in there especially being that that HDLRC um, all-in-one is a pretty big board we were honestly surprised it fit in there um, it's not the cleanest build but it definitely fit so what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you some flight footage come back and kind of talk about what we feel of the pros and the cons to the bind and fly version of the Fury B X140. All right, enjoy that footage.
footage. I know it was, it was fun, to, fun to film. I'm going to go over the pros and cons. Basically, one of the coolest things I think about the the three inch builds are going to be this is below 250 grams. Um, there's no registration. You don't have to deal with as much of the FAA regulations or anything like that uh, because it's under that 250 gram uh, weight weight limit. It comes in at about 125 grams, how it sits right here. It's extremely cheap. Uh, as far as a bind and fly race quad or freestyle quad, that's extremely fast and uh, fairly inexpensive to keep up and repair uh, at about $125. I'd say that's one of the best bind and fly uh, rigs on the market that I've seen to date. It comes pre-programmed pre and everything is ready to go. All you got to do is set up your switches for arming it and uh, your buzzer and maybe modes and it's good to go so that makes it real easy out of the box and those thick arms um, are definitely another pro. I know I've, I've done some pretty hard crashes. I think Doe's put it down on the, out in front of the house on the concrete one time, didn't you? On the truck. And, uh, yeah, on the roof of the truck. And we didn't have any damage to it. Not even really bad scuffs yet. And, again, I think that has to do with the, the chamfering of the edges. You know, that's something you see in some of the real high-end quads where you spend $100 just on the frame. <clears throat> For the money, uh, the camera that comes on this quad is incredible. Again, some of the other bind and flies out there, the cameras that come on them are just garbage. Uh, you do flips and they white out on you. And just just all kinds of bad stuff. This camera does work really well. Uh, race band, again, got to have race band. If you plan on going to the local multi-GP events, you got to have race band to be able to get out there and fly. Uh, with that 40 channel VTX, that puts you right in there. <clears throat> um, me and Dozier both fly top mount batteries. We like to put them on top. Uh, this one here, you can set it up to be bottom mount or top mount. It's totally up to you. Um, this one with the antenna setup is a little bit harder, but it does fit a battery on there with the antenna and the battery is just out of the picture. So it's perfect. Um, but you could probably even figure something out a little bit different with the way this mounts. I know ReadyMade has those little rubber tails for mounting antennas back there and making it a soft mount wouldn't be a bad idea if you like top mount like we do. Yeah, I, like top mount I do too. I just, I don't like, I don't do the most gentle landings. So I, I don't like denting my batteries up. All right, so some of the cons. Uh, <laughs> it came with an XT60 connector. An XT60 is huge. <laughs> And I understand that most people on the market have XT60s on their batteries. But again, you know, even on these micro batteries, the XT60 is just a giant plug. Um, and I, I don't feel like I need uh, as much current or amp draw. So we switch these out for XT30s. Definitely light, you know, keep it lighter as we can. Another thing I like to do is pop these little... Uh, balance plug protectors off on the big quads I like them but on the little quads it's just extra weight that I have to um, try to strap to the pack I do like this and just keep them without the protectors on there it just tends to tuck a little bit easier the uh, another con is going to be the XM receiver that came with this uh, they're they're kind of known for uh, losing bind I haven't had any issues at either one of these yet um, but the XM also is a single antenna uh, receiver, so it, it doesn't get a whole lot of range. And actually, uh, me and Doze were out flying at a local park and had a fail-safe because of the, the one antenna. And just, it just happened to work out perfect. Cool stuff, fail-safe right. over concrete. And it, right, we happened to fail-safe, and it just happened to be over concrete. That's usually how it goes. Um, whereas the XM Plus for... I think three dollars more than the XM. You get the full range antennas, and it just it, it works better with the Tyrannus, in my opinion. Uh, I'd like to see these. So, the time that they released this quad and started shipping, Betaflight 3.2.1 was already um, out and released, 
and stable. I'd almost like to see these coming with Betaflight 3.2 already downloaded on there. If they're taking the time to set them up, they might as well put the newest software that they can on them. Just make them fly a little bit better and uh, a little easier to tune for sure. Another thing, uh, they don't come with a battery, which is just kind of a bummer. Even if it's one cheap battery, you know, a little $8 battery, it'd be better than uh, opening a box and not having any battery inside of there. The uh, Micro Swift clone, I feel that that's a, that's a con. Anytime you're, you're cloning something, especially a company that is constantly improving, you kind of take them from that company. Granted, I'll fly clone stuff. I don't mind. Um, anytime I can save a dollar, I'm doing good. Um, I just feel like that for the five dollar difference between the cameras, the uh, the Swift the is gonna perform a little better, and you get a better lens, and you're supporting a company that's actually working, uh, at making the industry better and putting out new products for you. It looks just like a learn cam too. It really does. It looks just like the micro. Uh, the only difference is the little stamp is, is not there. Uh, another another con, in my opinion, some people may agree, some people may disagree, is GearBest is who's carrying this, and they have really slow shipping. I don't know if it's just me, but I've seen other reviews that are the same way, and uh, this one took nearly two months to get to us and uh, <laughs> I think it was um, it was set to ship like three to five days after the order and it got put on back order and it ended up being like a month later that it shipped and then it took another 20 days to get here and it was just a big run around with the shipping so um, you know gear best if you're listening got to get better with your shipping and your communication with people <clears throat> and really the last con I guess it's not even a con more so it's just a recommendation is a uh, this is a bind and fly or a um, put your own receiver on there so basically you can get it with a FR sky receiver with a fly sky receiver with that XM 800 receiver or the um, no receiver package. I would really like to see this out there with a ready to fly, maybe one of those Fly Sky $50 radios and, uh, you know, a, a cheap pair of box goggles. And you, I, I feel like you could still, for $200 or less, have a really incredible <clears throat> ready to fly race quad that you could go out and and really rip just like the big quads and, and have a blast.